right now. Let's have a talk about uh, uh, the latest culture wars. I mean, I don't, don't even know where to start, really. We, after the Black Lives Matter marches started, the protests, we've seen the tearing down of statues, uh, Edward Colston statues thrown into the harbour at Bristol. Uh, Winston Churchill statues had to be boarded up to protect it. Uh, people, uh, including ex-scouts, have formed a cordon sanitaire around the statue of Robert Baden-Powell, the founder of the Scouts in, in Poole in Dorset. The BBC have even removed the uh, Don't Mention the War episode of Faulty Towers from their streaming service and from UK TV. Uh, a long list of uh, 80 statues is on the hit list of the Topple the Racist website. Uh, and uh, we are just seeing very, very strange things happen in our country. But um, is it going to make one black person's life any better? Let's talk to Dr. Tony Sewell. He's managing director of the charity Generating Genius. Good morning, Chitoni. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, put that question to you. Are any of these protests, any of these tearing downs of statues, uh, any of these uh, uh, these woke celebrities doing uh, online messages, is any of that going to make the life of one black person better? Not one. And I think you hit the, you hit the mark. Excellent point. And I think what it is, is that we see, if, if you think about it, it's like looking for the devil and they can't find anything in England. I'm talking about in the UK that's substantial. So you, you see a statue and that's it. And so you, you find something that you can then sort of pour, pour your rage or, or whatever you want to put on it. And, and, um, and, and there you go. And, and what I think was interesting was in Bristol where the mixed heritage uh, mayor for years, um, he could have had the power to, turn, to to get rid of that statue, and he said he had better things to do. You know, <laughs> because because he did have better things to do. Because improving people's <laughs> lives, their schools, exactly. uh, their housing, their chances of getting a decent but, job, but, those but, are better things to do. Let, let me tell you really what is going on here. I think that there is a real issue here of the sort of. <laughs> It's like it, it, there are disparities. I think there are disparities based on race, but they're not necessarily caused by racism. And that's that's that. that, that, that I'll give you a couple of examples. For example, in the black community, there's a real issue about single parents, you know, and dealing with those things. There's a real, there are real issues around education that are not really about racist teachers, but about different issues. And I think what's happening is that. We are confusing lots of things here, trying to kind of find the devil when really there's lots of internal things that we've got to deal with. I mean, a lot. Yeah. Again, a lot of people would say that they would, would say those things behind closed doors. They won't even the politicians dare to say those in public. Uh, you are a, a, a black man who has done something actually practical to try and improve the lives of young black and Asian uh, men and women and boys and girls. Your, your charity you founded, Generating yeah, Genius, I mean, been going, yeah. what, 16 years now? And your aim is yeah. to make sure that young people from disadvantaged backgrounds can excel in STEM careers, where there's, you know, there's loads of future, there's loads of loads opportunities, of loads of money, um, <laughs> and, and actually helping those kids to do well at school and to see that yeah. future, doing practical things. But this is the thing, removing an episode of Faulty Towers, which is about, you know, John Cleese having a bang to his head yeah. and, and, and and, uh, you know, uh, goose-stepping. I mean, tell you about it. The, worst, the worst thing also is, is, is Gone with the Wind. They want to get rid of it. No, they want to dump. Now, it's quite interesting with Gone with the Wind. Because one thing you say with, about this, when somebody gets up, somebody around the age of about 22 or 16 gets up and says, Gone with the Wind is impacting my life, as my <laughs> development as a black person, they, they haven't even seen the thing. How many, I mean, to, to go on, the thing is most young people don't watch television anyway and I can't I can't tell you the last time I've seen that on terrestrial TV also it's far too long for their attention span exactly so it's, not, it's not impacted they don't even know we're going they and they just heard of it the other day you know so th this thing is becoming completely irrational what, what do you make of the again a lot of this we've got you know the, the, the white actors and actresses who are doing in messages on social media about how they've got to change things I and mean, presumably they've all just Listen, been racist about, until now about, i don't know it's all about white guilt you know let's stoke it up let, let, let let's let white people feel bad about themselves now the thing is the issue about change for us for black people generally it is never good if it's built on guilt None of, none of the big changes that, 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 that black people have made, from Martin Luther King through to Nelson Mandela, was never really built on white people feeling guilty. What it was, was that you, you, you saw an issue and you went for that, that social change and you drove that. You know, this idea was, was if, in the end, if it's, if it's all about guilty, then it's all about people making these stupid gestures and nothing gets changed.
Well, that's the thing with gestures, and, and they don't actually tackle the real issues. And look, there's, there is an issue, certainly in America, of police brutality uh, against uh, black people. We know stop and search in this country, and we, and we, and we know in terms of deaths in custody. Even in America, Chicago has been at the place. Chicago is one of these places that has had one of the highest levels of, of, of criminality, really. And I would have said in terms of violence, uh, of black men in, being involved in violence against each other and through gangs. And Obama and Trump, none of them have really have been able to deal with that. And we, we, what we need is a focus in on some of the issues that beset our communities and why we've turned to violence and what's happened there and dealing with these is it burning big protests and marches don't that don't solve that because it's, it's really where you go to the why don't you, it's really facing the difficult issues and facing them down honestly that really leads to change and doing something practical like i do kind of getting kids into top universities from the poorest of backgrounds get rolling up your sleeves and getting down to the work the hard work that's what we got. I mean, we need some leadership here as well, you know. We need leaders, you know. Well, can I ask you just about, in terms of diversity and identity politics we've got right now, it seems to me when I was brought up, I was very much brought up by, you know, not, not to see colour. It just wasn't an issue. It wasn't that, you know, it didn't matter at all. It was simply like you, you just judge people on, you know, Martin Luther King's style, you know, the quality of their character and what they did, what they said, and not the, their pigment of their skin. Um, and that was much less of an issue. It seemed to me that, that, that racism has got much uh, smaller a problem. It's not gone away. Of course it hasn't over the years. And that actually that a lot of this is stoking racial divisions back up again. Now, that's my perception as a white woman. What's your perception? I think there's an issue that I think things still need to change. I mean, when, I, when I'm working with trying to get kids into corporates, etc., it's not that anybody's intentionally racist, but you do need to kind of get the opportunity to, 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 to black kids and to, to, to all kids, really, you know, all from poorer backgrounds. You need that. And we've got, we have a problem in England in, in, in trying to make that happen. But I would agree with you. I think a lot of this is out of a, of a, of a, of a sort of identity politics that sort of wants to kind of, you know, bring again another kind of sense of, of, of kind of seeing racial injustice when, in fact, really what it is is there, there, there are more complex problems than that. And, and, and I wonder really, really whether most of those young people on that Black Lives Matter um, demonstration really had experienced any racism at all, really. OK, well, it's absolutely fascinating talking to you, Dr. Tony Sewell, Managing Director of the Charity Generating a Genius. Quick word from Andre Walker on all of that. Uh, I absolutely love him. I think he's doing something practical to improve the lives of young people. I think, you know, to watch all these Black Lives Matter protesters, it just feels like a bunch of middle class white kids, all called Sebastian and Tarquin, who've got nothing better to do with their lives. I fear you may be right.